Hello to you, my fellow dark ones. How are you guys doing today? How's life? We are going to start today's episode by doing a bit of a sacrifice. Myself. Since the aim of the dispenser is very garbage, <laughs> I wanted to say we stand close. Thank you. Don't you worry. We spawn here. You know, this also works. I want some flesh. My own flesh. Okay. I got it. Well, for the older mod star, I need 20 flesh and I got one. We need to make it more efficient. I don't know. Looting helps. Come on. Looting doesn't help. I guess we don't have to do all the sacrifices today. And yeah, I was a bit bored, so I tried using an anvil. It takes more time. This amazing experience is going to provide us with rejuvenating flesh. Thank you. You might also remember that we need two blocks of insanium coal. So there you go. We have 36 blocks left. That's good. But the only thing that we're missing for the Philosopher Fuel is this, the miniature Twilight Forest Portal. And I'm just missing this, block of Night Metal. And thankfully getting Night Metal is super easy. We just need the crab. These guys will also do, but the crab also gives you fish. Normally you would be able to get enough shards. The problem is that last time I got incredibly lucky and found the boss in like 30 seconds. However, I thought since we are here, we might as well get some borer essence. That should be a borer. Yes, we need it for Carmenite. Well, it's amazing. There are so many infested woods. So the crab is basic. The borer is faulty. We need one more. And here is one more. Oh, and I also... Oh, loot. Uh, I was going to say that. Uh, I also need some of the wood. The actual wood. Oops. <laughs> that was not part of the plan. Since I had to find a new dungeon, it doesn't really matter. We can just convert and use these shards in order to get some night metal. We can have 23. But later on, we do have to summon the actual mob. I'm not worried about the fiery metal because we do have the hydra, so we do get the blood. We can craft steel leaf, which is amazing. And for the carbonite, we already got the borer. Anyways, let me get the gizmos. Hello, me has the gizmos. This is so cool because in a few minutes, I'm going to have the older mod star. I do have the portal and there's one more item that we have to craft. Only one. And that item is called Awakened on Obtainium Vibranium Alloy Block. Amazing. Oh, I should have brought more blocks. Okay, it's fine. Oh, it's ready. <laughs> I was looking at stuff. Ladies and gentlemen, this is an amazing moment because here is our philosopher's fuel and this is the recipe of the old mod star. I just wanted to mention that it's possibly the recipe of the old mod star if I have not made any boo-boos. No boo-boos, please, please, please. This was difficult. I think it's correct. Yes, we have it. Oh, it goes here. Thank you. And it's not a quest. I had to finish all the other quests. Well, there's a quest I missed, which is fine. I'll go get the other one. For the next 18 ones, we really have to automate it, but I'm hoping I did not mess it up. I, oh no, I missed the block. Now we're good. So for the moment, we don't care about these parts anymore. And also the older mod star. We have two of them. Well, we will, after this one finishes. Come on. Thank you. I really wanted this to be a quest, because I do get a trophy. I want the trophy. And technically speaking, I have made every single item that you see here. Except this one. Oh, that's the pyramid. The first item that we want to craft is going to be the creative energy cell from power. It does require 2 billion RF, so it could take some time. <laughs> the problem is that you can't really make any creative tank. Yeah, that would have been way more useful. Actually, wait a minute. Don't craft. Uh... Creative energy cube from mechanism. This is one recipe. This is the other recipe. Did you just dupe me? You can craft it. This is the creative energy cube. Ah, do you know why it's not working? You need to mix it with an older mod star. Now I'm kind of curious because I'm sure this one gives you 50 million RF if nothing has changed. How much does the power one gives you? Let's go into a creative world. Joining the world takes a bit of time. It's fun. I do remember that mechanism was only 50 million. Now it's same as power. We go with the one which is least laggy. Power. Doesn't really matter, honestly. Ladies and gentlemen, the creative energy cell. And the other one is going to be the creative refined storage controller. That should reduce lag. Also, we don't need you. Well, I'm told it's going to reduce lag. I'm not really sure. However, the best part of having the creative energy cell is that we don't need the solar panels. They can despawn. Also the cables. And you. Maybe I should have done that after I made the creative controller. We should have power. Actually, the solar panels were on a different network. I kind of forgot. But which one was the creative one? You. You go there. And yeah, the power is no longer fluctuating, which is great. The other amazing thing is we don't need these generators. Because yeah, it's instantly full. That means we don't need these generators at all. They can despawn. I don't care. 
and I will also remove the soul lava, don't you worry. Of course, over here at our reactor area, there are also a few things that we don't need, for example, the induction matrix, the solar panels on top, and later on, I'm going to remove the turbine and put one more reactor. Oh, and by the way, the SPS chamber does not consume anything more than 50 million RF per tick. So we will set a limit of 25 million for each of the lasers. Yeah, this should work. So if I turn on my reactor, nothing's gonna explode, right? We're good. Yeah, it's 50 million RF and wow, look at the speed. Great. I thought to myself, now that we have the old mod store and we do have the creative items, maybe we should come to the village and celebrate with them. So I have put up some banners. We're going to plant some flowers. I'm going to give some food to the peasants. I mean, villagers, our dearest friends. Do you want food too? Have all the food. It's so nice to be kind. Don't you agree? I heard a TNT. <laughs> What kind of a village was this? <laughs> oh, it's Cubby! Welcome home! Actually, this is not home. It's not safe for you. I'll take you home. Welcome home. To the crypt. Yes, I do understand it does require some improvements. I will do that. Don't you worry. My dearest Cubby, you should love your home. Why don't you come out and eat? We have cake, we have cheese, we have shepherd's pie, and we have a dragon leg. Okay, I'll get blood. Sure. Cubby wants blood. We can get blood. Also, trust me, this was a miracle. It's incredibly difficult to make them fall down into the cauldron. Sometimes we do have a few misses, so there are some Tesla coils. It's nice, you get cooked and electrocuted. At the same time, we just need a teeny tiny bit more blood. So first off, I look cool. I know, but wait, wait, wait. It gets much cooler. Look, ouch, that probably hurt. But I'm invisible, so you can't see me. The blood stuff that we got from the dead king is actually quite amazing. It's like having a free ender pearl. I kind of like it, but in any case, now that we have the creative stuff, I was thinking maybe we should dedicate some episodes for fun. And since I'm actually having fun in the graveyard, I thought maybe I should connect it to our main base. Ladies and gentlemen, it has been a while later and we do have a decent road which leads from our base to the graveyard. And yes, Nikodos has been helping a lot by standing in front of the blocks and stopping me from placing them down. But for our future projects, I have also extended the path and you might notice we have an extra structure. That is the frog light farm that we used to have on Trifecta. I just copied it and well, basically I had to switch every single block because that one was made with mud. We don't have mud. That is going to be the site of our botanical automations. But for today, here's what we're going to focus on. First off, Nikodos, you should stay here because we want to focus on the altar. We just have two the mod stars, which is pretty much garbage. We need 18 more, so we need to automate a few things. Well, to correct myself, it's not garbage, but it was like when you play Project Ozone, you just get the creative items and say, I don't want the chaos plank. So yeah, we want the chaos plank, which in this case is two the mod star blocks. So first things first, we are going to sacrifice one more Wither's Compass and we're going to summon a meteor. And yeah, you might notice that takes a huge dent. In order to summon more reinforced speed runes, I'm always keeping four of them in the system. And these are the 16 that we would be able to sacrifice. You know, for the intricate Hellforge parts. I never thought that blood is going to be that important, so we only have 24 runes of sacrifice, which I actually upgraded them a few episodes ago, if you guys remember. So now we have to sacrifice capacity for sacrifice. <laughs> and yes, that made a lot of sense. Every time we're getting six buckets, that's nice. That could have already solved my problem. I mean, if I have two of them, is it gonna drop? Well, it's dropping. The question is, yeah, you're also kind of dropping. That is perfectly fine. We have more parts. I just wanted to show you something. So I needed some ethereal slates in order to make more reinforced runes and it puts 17 demonic slates at the same time. For that, the blood is kind of keeping up, but that is a crazy amount of blood. So this altar is amazing. We just want it to be more amazing. Okay, I have increased the spawn rate of the spawners. So we are getting more villagers. They don't have any brains. So you can do whatever you want. And basically my aim is that I want to be able to have two orbs at the same time. The first one, which is generating us life essence is keeping up. The second one is not because the transfer rate is no longer enough. It is very true. I can add one more spawner. We can have the same ritual and we don't have to do any of this but let's try it you see because this is the speed that i'm getting life essence which is not great but if i have two of them notice the difference 
it's a lot. Even at this stage where the second altar is not getting blood all the time, the rate isn't that bad. The problem is that I want to automate the meteor, so I want it to go really fast. I think in order to achieve what I want, we need two or three more wither compasses. Well, let's make them one. Oh, oh, we have it. It doesn't stack. A bit more blood and we should be able to summon one more meteor. Ouch. I forgot. <laughs> I changed my armor. This withers you. Okay, I think we're good. Go to hell. Thank you. This time I think we got more. Well, it's perfectly fine. We can get one more withers compass and go back home. I have upgraded some of the runes of capacity to reinforce. I added four more runes of sacrifice. I upgraded some of these acceleration runes and displacement runes and well, this guy is keeping up, the generator. Our consumer is not keeping up, but the rate is great. We're getting 10 buckets of blood per second, which is amazing. For the Wither's Compass, it's not that amazing, but for the thing that I want, this is actually great. So by sacrificing one more Wither's Compass and upgrading a few more runes, this should go crazy. And it should be sustainable. It's just that uh, we need almost 10 million LP, so <laughs> that's a lot. Oh, and by the way, I just realized you can convert the blood from evil craft into blocks using a drying basin. Until right now, I was actually doing the entire process manually, meaning that I had to silk touch everyone. I did learn it a bit late, I do admit. I summoned one more meteor and sometimes I do have a feeling we get extra. Doesn't sound very correct, but it's fine. Ladies and gentlemen, finally we are maxed out. The generator keeps up and the second one is always full and we are getting 10 buckets of blood every second. Maybe it's faster. Seems faster. And yeah, I did waste a bit of speed runes, I guess. <laughs> we didn't need all of them. It's fine, I can recraft them again. The part of optimizing altars has already been complete. Now we move to phase two, which is getting exactly 18 wither compasses. That's two. I didn't really set up a pattern for it because we're getting different Athamas, we're getting different forges with different NBTs, so the system can get confused. Let me craft some of them manually and see how many we can get. I did spend some time crafting and at this very moment, we have seven wither compasses. I've also used most of the Athamas and now we have 45 abyssal sacrifices. I think we need to use two of the wither compasses in order to make more wither compasses, so let's do that. But for the rest, we should have enough material. Wait a minute. You're not climbing fast enough. Jerk. Last time it gave me a lot. Oh, and yeah, one more thing that we're missing is the heart of the deep. I do have a warden in a jar, but I think this is going to be much easier if I do it manually. How many times do I have to activate this stupid thing? I should have also worn my mecha suit. <laughs> We're gonna die. Maybe not. Yeah, manually is way easier. Way easier. I guess with the loot piñata, it's way, way easier. Okay. We're done. We have 43. Okay, so here's what's going to happen. I need to AFK until we get enough blood so that I can summon more meteors so that I would be able to make more wither compasses. This is a very expensive ritual and we need almost 10 million LP, so I will AFK here. You know, we want some antimatter as well. This time I don't actually care if it's nighttime or daytime. We have infinite power. Because <laughs> during the night it actually gets very scary. The pipes get full. And I don't know if you AFK here for hours and hours and hours, the backlog can get very dangerous, I guess. With infinite power, that doesn't really happen. We do have enough blood. Let's summon one more meteor. I did turn off the reactor. It's mechanism. I don't know what can go wrong. It might say that, hey, you forgot to load the chunk and I'm gonna explode. What would you do with all those demonites? <laughs> is the main problem. You gave me 14. What? Why is it being a jerk? Seriously, I think it's being a jerk. Well, we have 15, so maybe one more. I go back to the reactor. Can't really AFK all the time because I do get bored, so I thought maybe I should work on the reactor structure. And while I was working, we have 10 million more LP. So let's order another stupid meteor. Come on, please give me everything I want. Okay, this time it's good. 28. It's just that we're out of Wither Builders, but I think we're done. Let's get a few for good measure. No, I can't. We don't have skulls. It's fine. But we have 20. We're done with the Wither's Compass. So now here's what's going to happen. We're going to automate this tower in order to get Inferium. That is literally the only thing that we're going to need. The only thing that it needs is one Prosperity Shard and if I'm not wrong, half a million LP. Let's see. Yeah, it's half a million. Exactly. So we should get that every minute, every 50 seconds. So I don't think we're going to need the prosperity shards. We just go with the essence. Yeah, even the solium, we void them. Again, I'm not exactly sure if this system is going to work in this version, but we're going to have a dropper, a hovering hourglass. This is a timer from Botania and we're going to give it three soul sand. That should be three minutes. I'm going to fill it in with prosperity shards like so. Oh, that was too much. And we should be able to test it with a button. Does it work? Or did I pick it up? 
Now my magnet is off. Ooh, so every three minutes, we should get one of those meteors. Well, we are getting blood fast enough. Let's go with two minutes. And probably this place has to be chunk loaded. So let's do that. I have been standing here for a while to see if the system is going to work automatically or not. If we get one meteor, then I'm going to be very happy. And seriously, this can run every one minute. Right? Okay. Something dropped. Did we get a meteor? Yeah. Yeah, this can run every minute. <laughs> We're not losing LP. So you go in and do it every one minute. Another thing is that I had 83 blocks of insanium, which is a bit crazy. And then I remembered we had a builder in the overworld. So maybe that's one of the reasons. I think it finished. One minute is a long time. I'm bored. I think it summoned one because it suddenly dropped. Yeah. Okay. Here's one slight problem. I might have messed up the filtering. Yeah, that's a slight problem, but that can be fixed. Oh, it's my tower. Oh, no wonder it didn't look tall enough. Anyways, the filtering was an easy fix. It's already done. And I think it also summoned another meteor. Let's just see if I stand here. We're also going to get a meteor. Then we're done. We're good. Yep, it summoned one. The LP dropped. Yes, we're getting Inferium. Every minute. I was just checking. This is the speed that we're getting Inferium blocks. That's actually not that bad. The blood doesn't drop. We just summoned another meteor. We have 4.1 million. So it can be reduced to 50 seconds, but uh, yeah, one minute is fine. I just had to fix a few things at the Greg Tech oil processing area because I made a teeny tiny boo-boo. Ethylene is not something that we are producing. It's a byproduct of oil. And well, one of the drawers got full, so we didn't get any extra ethylene. Yeah, we do need polyethylene pulps in order to make the actual nether stars. So after getting like 700,000 of them, it kind of shut down because we were not getting any more ethylene, hence no polyethylene. I have already fixed the drawers, I installed void upgrades, so it shouldn't happen again. But in the episode that we set up the nether star factory, somebody actually left me a very important comment. So there is a bit of a miscalculation. You put one wither skeleton skull, you will get one inert nether star and a bit of neutron gas. You mix one of the inert nether star with neutron gas and you will get 16 inert nether stars. Up to here, we are all doing the same. From here, there are two ways. One of them is that you will use antimatter, 16 inert nether stars gives you 16 nether stars. So it's a one-to-one -one ratio, correct? What I'm doing is that I take one inert nether star, I mix it with aqua regia, and in return, I'm going to get 2,304 millibuckets of nether star essence. I mix it with polyethylene, and basically each inert nether star actually gives me 16. So this is why I needed 8,000 skulls and not 80,000. Hello, and I guess bye-bye. Just before we wrap up today's episode, there are two things that I want to do. One of them is that we do have a few graves. We have Jordan, who asked for a purple candle. We have Zero Gravity, who asked for some ice. And here is some dry ice, I guess. We make it into a slab, but it doesn't go in. I didn't know you're a block entity. Well, he did ask for ice. I just wanted to be fancy. <laughs> we use blue ice. Then we have Jasper. What he asked me was for a thermal generator but you get a nitro crystal block. Cause the thing is, I want to reduce lag and I think having machines everywhere under everyone's grave is not a very good idea anymore. There has also been a slight opening in the crypt. We have Timons and we have Xenopel. Xenopel. Hopefully. We have Ardenta, who wanted a bucket of soul lava, which you can't cover it. Good, okay. We do it like that. Then there is Dark Larry. He asked for a block of uranium, but I think plutonium looks nicer. Because the other one is from the older mods mod, so it, it doesn't look that amazing. Then we have I Gaze Girl. She asked for a lot of things, including lasers, but uh, yeah, they cause lag, so here's the egg. We also have Great Dreamer, Kanapka, who asked for a fish. That's a fish trophy. And we have Matka. He asked for an EV machine. We're going with tungsten steel. The final thing that I want to do for today is that I want to change the turbine that we have from mechanism with another reactor. The reason that I had to make the turbine was that, well, we needed antimatter and the SPS chamber consumes a ton of energy. Right now, we don't really care about the energy. We're even going to void the steam because we don't need that ever. Also, I'm not really sure. Uh, what are the sizes? This one can burn 500 millibuckets easily. I'll be very happy if this one can also do the same. Well, let's remove it and see what happens. Also, dig faster. Thank you. This is going to be a less fancy reactor, meaning that we don't have fuel assemblies the entire way. Because in the bottom one, we're actually wasting a ton of fuel assemblies and, well, 
These parts are not required. We just want it to go 500 millibuckets per tick. Also, somebody actually told me that my reactor is going to melt down one day and he didn't explain to me why. I'll be very happy if you can explain to me why because, uh, well, I can't fix something if I don't know what's wrong with it. I personally think that the reason that he mentioned it, that my reactor is going to melt down, is because of water. Well, I got a tip from one of you guys that one of these eternal water blocks is much more efficient than having sinks. Because instead of pumping the water out of it, you just place it next to a valve and it will auto extract. Since the supply of water is infinite and the pumping rate is infinite, I don't see why it would explode. That's the thing. But let us do a final check. We have two infinite water sources. We have an output for steam, which is being voided. Doesn't really matter. Input for fissile fuel, which yeah, we're running out. And this is why we have to check. This is for waste. Well, we already know that the first one works. Let's check the second one. Now that you scared me, we start with 50 millibuckets. It's fine. 200, we are fine. 350, still fine. Okay, go to your 500 and see what happens. We're not taking damage, that's good. Let's activate the other one too. The temperature is 875, here it's exactly the same. This one has capacity for more coolant, I guess. Now it's the same. <laughs> okay, doesn't really matter. So we are burning fissile fuel at a rate of one bucket per tick. It's a bit crazy, I know. Still, we're not taking any damage. And I guess we can check a bit. Getting 100 mil buckets of polonium. <laughs> Every tick. Oh my goodness. Oh, I broke the stupid glass. It's fine, I'll get it. I think we're good. The only problem that we have is the production of fissile fuel, which at our case, it's way less than 256 millibuckets per tick. You see how fast it's dropping. That does have an easy fix, but we don't even have to fix it because this is not running the whole time. It has been running for a while. I have to turn them off very soon because we're losing fissile fuel in the tanks. But please remember, the rate that we were generating antimatter was 3.6 per hour. Now it has been doubled, so it's 7.2 per hour. That's going to be finished in, I don't know, 11 or 12 hours. It's not much. Another issue that I have realized is that we're producing too much waste. That's a lot. Each reactor is generating us half a bucket of nuclear waste per tick. That is one bucket and we can process one and a half buckets of it. If it turns into nighttime, I think we are going to have problems. One more solar neutron activator should do it, but since symmetry is important, we add two. Because during the night, they don't really work and there's going to be a huge backlog in the pressurized tube. I have been AFK here for a while. Nothing bad has happened, at least for the moment. But we are going to turn off the reactors because we're low on fissile fuel. But with that, ladies and gentlemen, I think it's also a good time to wrap up the episode. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed it. Till the next one. Bye bye.